uh, I don't want to take it away from her, but it would have made it more urgent, the Chris Melling win for Woodward SVB Alban Ocean. But let's see how it pans out. Best Chris Melling later will need to win to have a chance and then be dependent on outcomes of other matches. Yeah, and as we've just seen, Chris will play the last match on table two of the afternoon session against first rank. Oi. Jason Shorter break. And then he will only have one match left, which will be tonight. And that will be against Al Gamde, who's just pulled off a remarkable comeback. Shorter break in rack one. Uh oh. And it starts with a golden. Jason Shaw. Golden break for Jason Shaw. Can complain there. A good hit. training table his match is here to see if there are any lapses in his concentration he's very steady no shot on the two ball just look where the two ball was placed see it behind the one ball and it comes off that side rail and back over to this side of the table. Can clip it. Just in. Try and land left of the three ball, use the six and five as blockers. Over on table two, Alex Nukioi. He's on a straight nine ball to beat Cho Che Yu. Ladies World nine ball champ five racks to three. And Oi does that. Yeah, Nayuki Oi has been very solid throughout the event. And that's the nice thing about this format. We'll have 10 players to qualify, and of those 10, at least seven really think they have the game, they're ready to take it down, to take the championship. Yeah, Oi stays on that table. For the last match on table two, Melling will be getting his cues together. I feel like it's a must-win match for Melling. Would make things interesting if Melling wins that. Now Peg Livanovic looking, I think, to cross the two, bank it back up towards the four. Yeah. If he runs into the nine, wouldn't be a snooker. Cuttable, the two. But difficult to control the cue ball. Extension. Extension called. If you place it off of the four, it'll be easier to control the cue ball, and you could play it as a shot to nothing. Needs the cue ball to keep rolling here, so the seven can make life hard for Sanjin. That's what it's done. Extension, please. It's amazing if the cue ball just stops a little quicker or runs on. Sanjin is a big favourite to pot the two ball. This just changes it a little bit. He's still fancy to make it, of course. Yeah, you can play it with some pace, which I feel makes the shot a little bit easier. Run into the four ball, stay on the left side of the table. Mm -hmm. 
shot. It would be unlucky. That would be very unlucky to land behind that seven. Yeah, first rack and a half, run of the ball. He's not really been with Sanjin. He's lost the opening rack to a golden, and now he's got a kick at this ball. Does it go off the nine, two rails? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, or even, yeah. Uh, two rails, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, the scratch is huge. So you either go to the top rail and deal with the scratch or off the left long rail and play for half a three ball. Nice, nice effort. And rewarded, real good, good stuff. That pot on the two ball and this kick shot tells you why Sanjin is leader of the pack. He's playing good. Yeah, it wasn't an easy kick for Jason because it wasn't a natural path. He had to play that with a lot of left spin, so it's like a feel shot. I don't know why he's having a chuckle. He's had a golden in the first, Alex. What's up with the man? Was watching Peg Livanovic on the practice table. Realized actually how compact his follow through is. In some shots, it's almost like SVB. But he seems to hold the cue back. In general, I think it's easier for people to learn to play pool or to get better cubal control, more efficiency if they relax their backhand. But there are examples of top players, world champions, SVB, one of them, who very much stabs at the, when he finishes his delivery. Yeah, SVB is currently sat in ninth place. He's on seven points. Just sitting below him in tenth place is Skylar Woodward on six points. SVB's got two games left to play. Skylar's got three. I think that helps Skyler Woodward. He's a night owl. Yeah, the good thing with Skyler Woodward and all, I just know he's going to come tonight swinging at everything. He's that type of player, isn't he? He's going to just go for it. He's not going to shy away and think, oh, I might not qualify. Oh, no, He'll no, really no. go for it tonight with Skyler. Yeah, more pressure does him well. Yeah, this match is tied at 1-1. 16 of the world's greatest pool players from all over the world, really. Such a... You know, such a vast field here from all over the world. Pool players, late two lady players started. 61-year-old Earl Strickland still playing at a good level as well, you have to say. Made it here. Obviously, there's no crowd. This is played behind closed doors. But do piece, not worry. Jason shot a break. Because you can buy tickets to the World Masters, Alex. Not you personally. I mean, I mean the pool fans. May the 10th to, through to the 13th. It's at the Brentwood Centre in Essex. Head over to matchroompool.com. I believe tickets are going really well there, so I would be quick. It's a fantastic tournament. I'm glad to see it go back down to 16 players. That's what it always was. You won it, Alex. What year did you win it? Uh, 99. I should have known that. My bad. When did you win it? I lost in the semis. Does that count? <laughs> you beat Efren in the final, is that right? Yeah. Wow, Ephraim Reyes. Is that your proudest moment? Uh, or was it joint captaincy with me on the Moscow Cup? Yeah, that was great. <laughs> you know, the, I had a couple of moments. Yeah, was that your proudest moment well, with the queue? I don't know. That's at the beginning when I just started playing internationally, so I had no worries, no battle scars. I was playing carefree. And then I think in 2002, I beat Archer in a big final in the United Arab Emirates, won a kilo of gold. You still got it? And this was after my, like, my uh, big crisis, so that felt yes. like a more hard-fought victory. You know. Have you still got the gold? Nah. I knew you'd say no. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, it seemed a good time to sell.
Ooh. Ooh. Huh? Came back. Yeah, it looked a little wide, yeah, I think. I think, let's have a look at the two ball here. It looks to curl in at the very end. Watch it here. Yeah, he pulled in. Yeah, curling. See, the thing is, when you put a table in and you level it, after a two or three days, it, you know, the weight of the table, it sets, so table fitters need to sort of come back out and just give it another little tweak. Nice little mini swerve by Beglivanovic. Now has to deal with the six and seven. Steer through him, stun run through. Out in the open. Um, let me say something. 2005, I won two goals at the European Championships in the Netherlands. I think that was the nicest to win in front of your own people. Really? Okay, that's out of the way. Yeah, Jason Shaw will be well aware. Sanjin's only lost two matches, Jason's lost three. In a good spot, Shaw, but he did lose earlier today against Peggy Lyon. Now he risks losing this match against Peggy Ivanovic, and then, you know, your positive mindset can start to dwindle. It's really a test for the players to keep m mentally fit throughout the week. These first group matches have basically just been preliminaries. Tomorrow, 10 players left, nine matches in two days. We move up a gear. Yeah, he's done well there, Sanjin Perlovanovic, the man at the top of the league table. He lost the opening rack to a golden, but he's won the next two. He's 2-1 two up over Mr. Shaw. going on on table one uh, they're having a look at the table we saw Peglivanovic playing that two ball thin missed it actually and then the two ball curved back in so they'll be having a look at that so we'll shift our attention to this match Chris Melling against Nayuki Oi Melling just got his first point on the board by making the nine on the break, a golden break for Melling, really in need of a victory against Roy to have a chance. If he wins both his last matches today, two matches to go, extension called. He can get to seven wins and have an outside chance for qualification. Yeah, what's not going to go well for Melling is he racks one and lost. That's not in his favor at the minute. Yeah, I hadn't looked at that yet. So, if he wins 5-1 against Oi and then 5-0 his last match, he would still be... No, he would be on zero. He would be on zero. So, to have a chance. A fighting chance. Yeah, how big was the match against So Soa for Melian before when he had that chance? Good pot from Oi. Stun his cue ball underneath the seven. It seems from here he has a comfortable angle Extension to do that. Code. Yeah, and if Melin does go on to lose this match and he stays on five points, he's only got one match left. 
that would mean Chris and Long Duck can only get to six points, Alex. Yeah, losing this match, um, it's a it's a done deal. Okay, work is done. Everyone agreed. It's good enough. Let's go. That's a more than good enough break by Peglivanovic. Yeah, I like that hit. Let's have another look. Difficult two ball though with the cue ball so close to the rail. Just play the natural angle, level cue. The only thing that you can vary is the speed. So play the speed that you need to get a thick enough hit on the seven. Now watch his backswing and delivery. I said before that it's real compact at times. Found the gap. He didn't mind the gap. Awkward queuing though over the eight ball. Key shot in this rack. Extension, please. Make it stay away from the rail and his favorite to double his lead. It. And that's what happens when you're queuing over a ball. It's hard to sight the pocket. It's a shot that the pros don't really like. It doesn't waste a lot of time, Jason Shaw. Looks like being an autopilot. Swing it round in the other direction. Three rails position on the nine. Yep. An easy Shaw. out for Scotsman Shaw. Two two. Do you stab when you deliver the cue, Carl, or do you have a, like a soft hand when you come through the ball? Or do you know what I'm talking about? No. No, really, no? No. Well, if, if, for example, if you watch SVB, when he delivers the cue, he sort of stabs it. He, he, he looks to squeeze the cue. And for example, Ocean or Double J or uh, who else in the field? The frack. Uh, FSR, they have, to have a much softer hand when they release the cue. I'm not 100% certain, but we're going to go for a sneaky game of snooker tonight, so you can have a look and tell me. All right. Am I a stabber or a stroker? I don't know. I'm trying to vision it now. So do you finish on your chest with this? Well, we'll see. We'll see. Cue ball. How's that? Hello. That's actually nice. As all the balls were coming to rest, I think Shaw feared the worst, but look how this turned out here. Well, listen, you and I know, the people back home do not, how much Shaw has been complaining about other people's position on the two ball after the break. Yeah, right? he's not stopped. He's not stopped. Upstairs. He's not stopped. What he didn't mention are his golden breaks and his positions after the break. Conveniently forgot about them. Now work to be done with the pocket top left blocked for the three ball. Well, Oya's just missed a nine ball to go three one up against Chris Mellin. Mellin's, he needs a, a win here. That was unbelievable. 
it's one of those if Chris Melling miraculously would go on to qualify this miss by Oi can be a pivotal one now how does he go to the three a lot of speed watch the pocket as well watch the scratch open pocket low left fortunate from Shaw Extension, please. Nice. Such a good natural potter of the ball. Yeah, it's really good floating the cue ball. And for me, that's where his next progress lies commit himself a little more to safety play because he has such a good feel for cue ball speed he can but he doesn't always have that mindset jason shaw wins the wreck A little bit of breathing break. space. Trailing by three racks to two. All points are carried over. So Peglivanovic, Jason Shaw, they, they're they going to have an easier route to get to stage three, come stage two tomorrow and on Sunday. Wow. It's almost as if that cue ball went through the nine. Look at it in the replay. Looked funny that came off of the eight ball after contacting the nine. Yeah, it's got a good breaker, Sanjin. Wow, what is going on on table two? I know you can't see that unless you're watching it on the multi-sport YouTube channel, but we've got a screen in front of us and oh, you just missed a seven ball. That was over the pocket, more or less. That's what Melon's got left. Oh, he missed a nine in the previous rack, so that's why it's 2-2. Two, two. Chris is okay here, he can just bend it around a little bit. Yeah, he's okay. Sanjan also looks okay here on table one. He needs a good shot on the three. If he falls short, if he stays high on the four ball, that nine comes into play. Chris Mellon wins the rack. Well, Mellon wins the rack over on table two to take a 3 2 lead. So he's ended up short on the four nine ball comes into plates always harder on the tv table to play shots with top spin than with draw i feel it's difficult to get a true reaction stage extension please very low on the cue ball where he addressed the cue ball doesn't look like he's trying to swing around the nine Nicely done, far enough. Good shot. Yeah, in position. 
Still very young, Sanjin, but very seasoned. I think it's for four years already that he's traveling alone. Four or five years. Nice, confident out. Good break. Sanji Peglevanovic levels the score three each in a race to five to retain the lead position in the table. The seventh rack, three backs each. Jason Schulterbrook. Last match of the afternoon session on table one. Jason Shaw can level the before last match in the afternoon session. Excuse me, we have a good one coming up after this FSR against Elbin Ocean. But Shaw, by winning this match, he can level Peglivanovic. Then they would both be on 11 wins from 14 matches. It's not do or die. Qualification for stage two is certain. But it's nice to keep that winning streak going. And to make that buffer for stage two as big as possible. Sanjin has got a part of two in. Not the greatest shot from Jay. Please. I would focus on the pot here, not worry about that four ball too much. Come around it is good, run into it not so much, but... Make sure to sink the two. It's okay, you can send the three into the five, purple five. Can play it with a high ball, can play it with low right. High right. That's good enough still. Yeah, nice. Very decisive, he's oozing with confidence. He saw the cut in the three, walked over, saw the gap. Shows little doubt. It's the best feeling in the world if you're playing good on the biggest stage and you're not worried about making balls, you're just finding solutions. Go here, go there. It's all about speed and tip position. You can still choose to put the cue ball above the eight ball as well. General players don't like that. It's a newbie for me, seeing Shaw in the chair, looking away. I haven't seen him do that too much. No, I don't know if it's because obviously Chris is on the next table with him, spends a lot of time. He knows Chris has got to win that match. Or maybe he just don't like watching Samson.
straight in nine. Very good match this. Few mistakes. Took a surprising long time there. Yeah, I think that's what he does on certain shots. He just aims a bit longer. Just makes sure he's ready. He doesn't play, you know, fast like shows. There's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, there's a shot clock there for a reason. He doesn't have to fire it in four seconds. Melling's tied at 3-3. Three, three. Oh, he had the break. He got kicked in off the break. Melling had ball in hand. Melling at the table. The eighth wreck. Sanja Bilivanovic is breaking on the hill, leading 4 3. For the match, Bilivanovic. He's one of the few that is still putting his cue ball all the way out near the edge of the break box. see table two on this feed but if you've got it on your iPad your phone or your spare TV I'm sure you're shocked just like me Melon's missed the eight ball up the rail how about this for a break he's breaking very good oh, yeah. well listen you don't get to be top of the table after five days of play without a good break it's pivotal in nine ball yeah, this is the the ball that always left with. Whenever it's in the pocket, it's always awkward. And the fact that the cue ball there, uh, he's kind of just got to rip it back and see where it lands. Well, the bump is going to be fine. Chris can't complain. The eight ball he missed was a shocker. Yeah, you can, you win oh, he's on the hill 4-3. Sanjin's on the hill here. This is for the point, for the match. And to obviously just cement place at the top of the table yeah stay in the bubble staying on cloud nine I mean the payday is not in sight yet but five days of match room pool Sanji Pelivanovic is bossing this group of 16 players Yes, he is so far, but things are going to get a little more dicey. <laughs> sure, but whatever the outcome may be, a good showing already. Very good showing, yeah, completely agree. And obviously moving forward, Alex, over the next, you know, the, the remainder of this event, he's going to be feeling good, isn't he? He has to be. using all the pocket had to offer. Two balls needed for a 5-3 win and to go 12 wins out of 14 matches. Absurdly strong. Extension called. Yeah, he's taking this serious, and what I mean by that is, you know, he's at the top of the leaderboard, he's qualified, things are looking good, and he's still wiping the queue down here on this nine. He wants to beat Shaw. He wants to, you know, send a little message out there. Taking names. Yeah, the right and that uh, nine ball goes down. Formidable breaking by young Peglivanovic, 